want to do a brief intro to Stokes' theorem. We're going to talk a lot about this. It's our last big topic. Um, and it comes out of, I want to talk about Green's theorem, because it's best seen, or a good way to see it is it's a generalization of Green's theorem. It's taking it into three dimensions. Green's theorem, remember, we have a two-dimensional region R and its boundary, boundary of R, so like schematically maybe R would be this big rectangle, and then the boundary of R would be this whole thing. And the theorem says that if I want to take the circulation of a vector field around the boundary of that, then an alternate way to do that is to look everywhere inside the region and add up these numbers that we, we know as the scalar curl. And of course, the explicit formula for that is when p when f is p i plus q j then that's um, d q d x minus d p d y and that's a we've seen that's a very very useful theorem and the way I like to think about it is the global circulation on the left hand is the sum of the local measures of circulation. These scalar curl numbers give us local circulation numbers, and then we add them all up, essentially, to get that integral. Now, what does it mean to take that into three dimensions? We're not going to change the dimensionality of the region. It's still going to be two-dimensional. Or of its boundary, which is still, of course, going to be one-dimensional. What we're going to do is we're going to just let that curve. We're going to let this, instead of be flat inside a plane, we're going to let it curve into three-dimensional space. And so a lot of the, things, the, the features are still going to be the same. So let me show you the picture here, or one version of the picture. Um, so the simplest version would be where we put everything in three dimensions, but we just still keep everything flat. So here's a, a, a vector field. This is going to be the vector field uh, where f is just the vortex vector field. Oh, sorry, minus y i plus x j. Just our standard vortex, or sorry, pinwheel actually, the pinwheel vector field. Just promoted into three dimensions. And to do that, I don't have to write it any differently. I just don't add a k, and I don't put any z's in. But that's the three-dimensional three promotion of the pinwheel vector field. And it looks like this. If I look at it from the top, let me see if I can look at it from the top here. It's just going to look like the pinwheel. If I look at it from the side, I see more of the three-dimensionality to it. But um, it's really essentially just the pinwheel in terms of what it's doing. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. OK. So let's look at a surface. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to look at it in the unit disk in uh, in the xy plane. That really reduces a step back to Green's theorem. Because this is such a, a simple surface, we've really just got a vector field in the plane and we've got greens. The total circulation is adding up these arrows around the edge. The curl is a little, the scalar curl is a little harder to picture, but you look at any reach any point inside here and you can see this little circle we'll use that as a like as a an indicator of take a little integral around that circle or another way is to think about it is put a little pinwheel where that circle is and see if that's going to turn and that's going to turn partly because these arrows are getting bigger as I go out and so if I put it right here the bigger arrow towards the outer region is going to push more than the, the smaller arrow in the inner region and it's going to end up turning so at every point I get a curl, and of course we know the scalar curl of this is very simple. It's constantly equal to 2. So now we're integrating that over this surface, the scalar curl over the surface. That's still Green's theorem. But here's how we're going to actually think about that now. We know that we could actually take the, the actual curl, not just the scalar curl of this guy, the curl of f is going to be not just 2, but it's going to be 2 times k, a vector field. And so here's a picture of that vector field. There's the vector field. And the interesting thing is that if I f take the flux of that vector field through the surface, oops, I went too far. There we go. Then that's going to be exactly the Green's theorem integral. And so at least in this case, it's a little unnecessary, but I could actually think of the, the 
integral over right over this guy as so let me go ahead and rewrite this I could think of this as the double integral over that region of the curl of f dot with ds, a flux integral. I don't need that to be bold. Now that seem, might seem a little silly, but in fact that's going to be Stokes' theorem, and it's going to be the version of the theorem that works even if the region starts to curve around in three-dimensional space. So let's look at that exam another example there, and bring up the picture. Okay, so here's that same uh, vortex vector or pinwheel vector field, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a dome surface. It's going to have the same boundary. It comes down to the same unit circle in the xy plane. But I'm going to look at um, what that's doing on this surface. Now, the boundary is the same thing. And so one side of this equation that we've got here is exactly the same. It's still the circulation around the boundary of a surface. It just happens to be that surface is curving into three-dimensional space now. And that vector field is the same. The boundary is the same. So that's going to be the same answer. And my claim is that if I have this integral, and I just change this to this curved surface, let's say S, then it should still be true. And let me just talk, I'm just going to talk about roughly why that should be true. I'm not going to talk about a, a detailed proof. We'll bring in the surface, and I've color-coded the surface to indicate how much is it circulating on each little bit of area. If you look at the stuff toward the top of the dome, and I look at each of the little panels here in the top of the dome, there's a lot of circulation there because the vector field is mainly sort of tangent to the surface there and it's definitely looking like the pinwheel. That's so the red colors are indicating a lot of density of circulation. Here, down here, it's different. Even though the scalar curl of this vector field is everywhere equal to 2, the, the amount of circulation in this vector field down here is not nearly the same because, let's look at it from above, these vectors, as I go from the top of this green panel to the bottom of the green panel, I'm not changing the radius, the distance from the z-axis very much at all. So even though it's a pretty big panel, there's not very much dif difference between these arrows. These arrows are not really turning around in a vertical direction. What would, another way to say it is, what would create a lot of circulation around the green panel would be if they, they are kind of rotating around in a vertical direction, swirling around like this, and they're not. They're swirling around in a, in a more horizontal direction. Well, we usually say that by saying, what's the axis of the rotation of the vectors? And that's exactly what the curl does. So let's uh, graph the curl. Okay, so the curl of this, oh no, so here's the normal vector, sorry. Let's look at, here's the normal vector to the surface. That is the data that records the direction of the panels. And that's important because I want to know how much circulation is created by this vector field on each panel. And it's this idea of adding up those circulations on each panel that's still the key to, to Stokes' theorem, just like it was the key to Green's theorem. So here's the normal vectors for those guys. But here is the curl. The curl, remember, for this vector field is just 2K. That hasn't changed. And now, the fact that the, um, the vector field was not really rotating much around this green panel, as opposed to the fact that it was rotating strongly around these panels, is encoded by the fact that the curl is perpendicular to the surface here and not very close to perpendicular to the surface here. So the curl is, the, the vector nature of the curl tells us how does the direction of swirliness, of circulation of this vector field, interact when we try to add it up over all the panels? And so here's what we're going to get. We're going to get something interesting. Notice, I probably should have said this at the start, this surface is significantly bigger than the disk. So you might think, how could Stokes' theorem possibly work? How could the integral of the curl over a surface only depend on what's going on on the boundary? when I could make this surface bigger or smaller by stretching it upwards and not and have the same boundary. The previous example where it was a flat disk, that's a smaller surface. Here's a bigger surface, and yet Stokes' theorem is saying the integral of the curl vector field, which is what I'm displaying here, should be the same regardless for the two, same, two surfaces. It can be possible because even though this surface is bigger, 
a lot of the extra surface is not contributing strongly. These green colors indicate that the integral of the curl, or in other words, the sum of the local circulations over these panels of, this, of the vector field we were showing before, is pretty small. Now remember, the weird thing here is there's two vector fields going on. Let me run through the sequence one more time. There's actually three vector fields that we have to deal with. There's the vector field itself, F, that we're taking the circulation of. That's this guy. Then we're going to be using the normal vectors, of course, as an aid in the flux integral. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate circulations of that original swirly vector field, not by dealing with it directly, but by calculating the curl of the swirly vector field and looking at how that flows through the surface. So it's a weird idea that we're calculating swirliness of the original vector field by changing it into its curl and seeing how much that's flowing through the surface. If you look at this as a flux, if we pretend these blue arrows are just a fluid, then certainly it's flowing stronger through here than through here because it's more perpendicular here and you're going to get more contribution. But the reason we were interested in that is really we're trying to get a picture of the integral of this guy, or the, swir the total swirliness of this guy. It's just we don't have a special integral called total circulation over a surface. What we do it is in two steps. We replace that vector field with its curl, and then we integrate that as a standard flux integral over the surface. And that leads us to Stokes' theorem. The integral over the boundary, the circulation over the boundary, is the integral of the scalar curl. It's the flux of the, sorry, of the vector curl, the full curl, over the surface itself. And we'll do lots of examples of that.